Yeah. All right. So are there any requests from persons wishing to speak to a specific action item? No. Um, please remember to state your name, board members, as it makes it easier when Tanya is doing the minutes. Um, moving on to 3.0. All items on the consent agenda can be approved by a single motion unless a board member, a member of the board or superintendent requests an item to be changed, moved, or voted. Are there any changes or additions to the board agenda? So formal. <laughs> All right. Um, any discussions about the out-of-state travels listed? Entertain a motion to approve the consent agenda. Me too. <laughs> or I move. I'm not entertaining one anymore. I'm sorry. I, 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 would move my, I move to approve the consent agenda. Second. Remember, Rich. This is Scott Nelson. Sorry. We have a microphones tonight. All right. Can I have a roll call vote, Tanya? Yes. Member De La Grange? Yes. Member Nelson? Yes. Member Brownell? Yes. Member Richardson? Yes. Member Coleman? Yes. Member Wilkins? Yes. All right, moving on to reports. Mm -hmm. um, budget discussion, transfer of funds. Director Smart. Hi. Um, so, really quick, I wanted to show you. Um, typically, you guys were receiving a graph like a line uh, graph of your expenditures and resources and um oh well, that would be the first page in here and what i wanted to do i'm actually going to pass this new one out or does they have one oh they have it um <clears throat> if you look at the additional page that's on your desk this is the same information, but in a bar graph, because I, for me, I believe it's, it, it explains the story a little bit easier, um, where the expected revenue, for instance, of that top bar graph is in blue. And then on a month by month basis, you would see the actuals in orange. Um, same thing with the uses or the expenditures down below kind of presents a little bit of a, a simpler story to tell in my opinion so we could either uh, continue with the original line graph or uh, go with the bar graph depending on what your preferences are um, or theoretically we could do both because it's really not a ton more work to add the second graph if you're specifically um, tied to it the other piece that I wanted to go over real quick um, on the lower, so on the, the bar graph form, on the lower right hand side, um, it just has a summary of you have your beginning fund balance. Um, just wanted to note that that is an unaudited fund balance. So once the audit is completed, that number will get updated. Um, then you have your revenues. So underneath that, you have your general uh, general fund resources, which is basically your beginning fund balance plus the expected revenue for the year. Below that, you have your general fund uses. Um, and then what we did was I put in an amount that says contingency. If we do use the contingency, and I'll talk about that in a second, um, or any portion of the contingency that you that's used, um, which changes our um, total general fund use to a you know to a, a different amount. Obviously, this is the this is the wrong form. Oh, oh, that's the old one. Oh, okay. I was like, I'm reading off of the wrong one. I apologize. Okay. Um, so general fund uses, I'll go back, contingency if used, which is our total general fund uses. Below that, we have our um, projected ending fund balance with the use of contingency, and then our project projected ending fund balance without the use of contingency, which is our different percentages of 7% versus the 14%. Um, and so 
the, the piece on the contingency that I wanted to bring up, and that's not for this discussion, but it's more of a heads up for our next meeting. Um, there were a couple of line items, actually a couple of areas within the budget this uh, by an, or this not by any this fiscal year um, that were overlooked. And so we are uh, meeting to get those numbers together so that we can present a contingency transfer. We're hoping to just do one this year and then uh, most likely one at the very end of the year just to sure up all of the um, balances by function but we are uh, going to need something uh, sooner than than that so probably your our next meeting will be presenting that to you guys for example hr didn't have a budget budgeted so right <laughs> right <laughs> so <laughs> so <laughs> you know where you stand Right. <laughs> yeah. So it's those kind of things that we're we're talking about. So yeah. Things that got missed. But. So any questions or comments? Are we yes. gonna have to do any sort of supplemental budget approval or is this just gonna be something at a admin level that happens? No, we'll have to bring it to the board. Okay. Yeah, because it'll be a an actual change to the adopted budget. And a transfer from contingency to it won't be a budget meeting. It won't be a, it will not won't be a budget, budget meeting. meeting. No, it won't be a budget meeting. Is that what you were asking? I'm sorry. No. Nope. Okay. Good. Thank you. Right. And you prefer the bar graph versus the line graph? It makes more sense in my brain, but I'm trying to report information to you. So whatever makes more sense to you is. Uh, I'm good with either one, but. I like to keep the business director happy. So if you prefer the bar graph, I'm good with that. So do we receive our these resources? Do they like come in and on a particular day or do we get stuff all through the month? Um, how do we get paid? <laughs> <laughs> so there's lots of ways that we get paid. Um, some of them are with grants and the grants we, some of the grants we get, fun, we get the money at the time of, you know, we submit for the grant and we'll get the grant at whatever date the grant is set at. Other ones, we get an amount for the grant and then depending on our expenditures, we will submit our expenditures <laughs> and then we'll get refunded mm -hmm. for those amounts. So there's not a specific time in the month, but we do receive revenue pretty much every month. And then um, like our state school fund comes in at different times as well. So our taxes. So for instance, if you look at November, um, we're expecting a, a larger amount. Now, some of that can shift, you know, depending on when we submit or when they deliver it, but. Well, so since large portions of our funding come from the state, um, which months does the state give us the money? Every month or just certain months? I don't specifically have that answer for you because I have not been here long enough to figure out exactly when the money comes in, except that I know that when this was, so uh, the when this budget was put together, um, the history of when we do receive money from the state and, and besides the state school fund, it's mostly mm -hmm. the grants. Um, that's kind of how it was laid out and projected on those amounts for these months. So typically the state will put money into our account four times a year, right? Mm -hmm. And it goes into the government investment pool locally. So it sits in our account and then we will draw down money as needed so it's sitting in an interest bearing account currently and then when we have expenditures we will draw that down usually throughout the month or set days in the month but uh Nefeli is correct that a lot of our grants will be reimbursement grants so we send in for payment we'll get reimbursement into our egon's account which is electronic grant management system and that money will sit there and then um, as we spend the money we access the money and things like that so house bill or senate bill 4030 we got 85 percent of that up front so that money came to us immediately the last 15 percent we get to get reimbursed for so um, it really depends on how it 
is designated by the state. So typical business stuff. Yes, it just happens when it happens, and there's lots of reasons why it moves around. Yes. Okay. Yep. Got it. Are we expecting to receive all of this money this year? Are we expecting to have less money coming in because of our attendance reduction from last year? Or are, what are our anticipated? I mean, as we look at our projections, I hope that we're at 85 million, but are we gonna be that close or what do we think is gonna happen? We won't, kind of we won't know that till we know enrollment. So we will get the highest of the two years that last year was our highest enrollment. We'll get paid on that amount. If this year is a higher enrollment, we'll get paid on that amount. So we have a little bit of flexibility. If we are lower than uh, we anticipate, budget was built on 5,600 5, students. Um, to date, we have 4,222 plus enrolled at this point, probably 4,300. Um, we have 450 new students to the district. So to give you a historical perspective, last year we had 132 new students at this point. The previous year, 1920, excuse me, non-COVID year, last full year, 1920, we had 540 new students at this point in the year. So we're well above last year, a little bit behind the pace of 1920, which was the highest uh, enrollment year in grants past. Right, 62. How, how, are we, how are we defining a new student? Is that like if they weren't here last year and they're coming back, even yes. if they were here before that, is that Correct. considered a new student? Yeah. Yes. So having said that, we are anticipating that we will meet the 5,600 student threshold and we'll receive full revenue for this year. Okay. So, and if we don't, at least we have last year's enrollment to fall back on. So we are at this point not anticipating huge cuts. And the cuts that we did anticipate, I think were dealt with by Sherry in the springtime last year when she created the budget. Is that fair to say? Yep. You folks are here. Yep. Well, we did a fair amount of attrition. Uh, yes. In the spring and summer, so we reduced that force quite a bit that way. And we'll continue to see our population increase into October. Usually in October is where we have our peak enrollment. So remember, people see yellow buses <laughs> driving around they go, oh, time for school. So sometime in September they register and then they get to school. So we'll see that correctly like that. So when do you have to report the number to the state? Do, do we get to October. fall into October before yeah, we have a, to? There's a, a fall number and then a spring number and then they reconcile it. Okay. Here's reading four. <laughs> bar graphs versus line graphs. Line graphs actually imply that you can interpolate, do stuff like that. And actually, months are discrete units. Mm -hmm. So, actually, bar graph makes more sense from that perspective. Bar graphs Agreed. what? Makes more sense from that, from a graph. Just um, one more question about the budget adjustment. Do we have a general idea of the amount that that might be at this point? I, no, I don't. Okay. I don't. It's it's not going to be five million or a million. It'll be less than that. Okay. Thank you. Significantly less than. A Significantly less. Yeah. I just don't have an exact number yet. Okay. Thanks. We're, we're but I, I know I have contingency on here as five million, so it's not that. <laughs> All right. We're talking, I think around 400, 300, somewhere in that 300,000 adjustment. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> we're having everybody meet with Nefeli and make sure their budget is actually what it's what they thought they had delivered in the spring. So once those conversations are completed, we'll have a good idea of what we need to do to transfer to make sure we're meeting everybody's needs. Very good. And letting Todd buy paper. <laughs> we did take up a pen collection. We did. <laughs> I have one I can spare. That's awesome. All right, moving on to 5.0 superintendent reports. Yeah. Um, a few things. I want to uh, talk about OSBA convention. That's November 11th 
12th and 13th in Portland. Uh, we're wanting to uh, start planning and getting hotel rooms. So we would like to make sure people are attending. You'd arrive Thursday night, the 10th. Is that correct? As soon as I give the agenda, which I don't have yet. Usually. Typically, it's all day Friday, all day Saturday. You and uh, go home after the morning session on Sunday. So um, we'd like to get rooms taken care of uh, at the the center. So is everybody attend planning on attending? Got a thumbs yeah. up. Thumbs up. Yes. Yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. All right. Very good. As long as I give the usual accommodation. Yes. A tent with yeah. a sleeping bag. Turns out we're right by the water. We will give you <laughs> a sleeping bag. Plenty of tents. Bag. All right. There are plenty of tents. <laughs> with baths. All right. Um, I can my shower. All staff, welcome back. It's August 22nd. You're going to be giving a keynote. Mm -hmm. All right. 45 minutes. Yes. Engaging. Highly Could inspirational. Maybe 50. I might okay. have it, All right. <laughs> Um, but you're all welcome to attend. Uh, we will be serving food from Cartwrights, lunch from Cartwrights. So it is a midday thing, not a morning session. So we would love for you to attend. With our 4030 money, one of our things that we purchased was a swag bag for all the staff. So um, it's got this cool bag. And inside we have a stadium blanket. So, right? This really is nice. Um, look. Mm -hmm. look at this. Look at the stainless steel straw. Yeah, stainless straw. Oh. Okay. Don't kill the turtles. Lanyard. Mm -hmm. There's one. These are <laughs> and an umbrella. And it says we are GP. Yeah. And then here. Oh, I missed one. Mm -hmm. Oh, we have these fun things. So I'll pass them down. So, what's the staff do? It's, oh, a, free it's a ticket free to any one event with a friend or whatever. Oh, yeah. So it applies to any one. event. With a friend or whatever. So a play, a game, a one BMW, ticket. whatever. Any one event. Yeah. Pass it down for sharing. Just keep passing. <laughs> because you can't be a school district without a bookmark. That's right. <laughs> and I will never get that. <laughs> so we're excited Exciting. about that. Yeah. Um, fun things for folks. Anybody want to look closer at us? Pass it down. You're good. Anybody want to see it? <laughs> you okay. will all be getting one. Yeah. All right. Um, but yeah, uh, we're starting at 11 o'clock. Is that correct? 11 o'clock in the Commons. In the PAC. In the PAC. PAC. So please uh, feel free to join us. We'd love to have you there. Okay. And you can heckle Cassie during your speech if you want. I don't I doubt it for a minute. <laughs> um, Subcommittees, we've talked about board subcommittees and um, we would like to get those going uh, sooner rather than later. Uh, in particular policy, we've got some policies that we need to start addressing. Um, I just wanted to make sure that we're, these are the committees that we have talked about and everybody's comfortable with that. And we have you signed up for the committees that you uh, are interested in. If anybody has seen something on there that is a, um, I'm looking at facilities policies and strategic planning currently. Okay, and we'll get to 5.4, 5.34 in a moment. Um, do you, yes. So I called Tanya and mentioned that since there's only two on the strategic planning, I wouldn't mind fitting in on that one also. Absolutely. And these committees don't have to be evening committees. They can can be evening committees. We can do lunchtime, whatever works for folks on each committee. Um, but we'd like to get a policy committee meeting going. Uh, like I say, pretty quick here. Um, 
Any thoughts on open days, how this you want this to look? Six times a year. Yeah. We just so, got an update yesterday. Did we from policy from OSV? Okay. About 25 okay. Policies listed. And then we have three that we are working on. I think a total of three that we want to address as well. So um, I would say that if we do every other month for two hours, we would be able to be up to speed on our policies uh, pretty quickly here. And then we can start visiting policies that haven't been looked at for decades um, or, you know, <laughs> or longer. It, it's really common. There are policies that you just haven't looked at because they haven't come up. And now they're, it's a 1995 sitting in there and you're like, eh, it should probably be looked at and just revisited those kind of things. So um, is there a day of the week? Would we like to do uh, the policy committee on? I'm asking from our policy folks, is there a day that works better for you than others? I can be flexible. I prefer Monday or Friday. Okay. But I can of the choices, I'm going to pick Monday. Right? Okay. Six a.m. <laughs> yeah. You got it. Yeah. No. Six at night. Monday at six. Oh, Monday at noon. Monday what? Yeah, Monday anytime. Mm -hmm. Do on Monday for a subcommittee. Yeah. Debbie. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. Debbie. Um, Mondays were for me, um, except the 29th. Okay. Okay. All right. It's okay until it isn't. Okay. All right. Uh, Cassie, is there, or Tim, I was just wondering on the policy committee, I see that there's, there would be a quorum of members. Does so that we'd have to post it. Okay. Yep. All right. Thank you. That's a public meeting. Yes. All right. Okay. So um, the 22nd is the all st staff day. So that's not going to be really a great day. And the 29th is the first day of school and doesn't work for you, Debbie. So what's the, well, obviously the first Monday is not going to work for anybody because that's going to be Labor Day. Um, so this month look. and this month only we'll do it on Tuesday. What's Tuesday the 23rd look like for folks at lunchtime? Does that work at all for you? I don't be coming back from the lake. Okay. But I can call in. You don't have to do that. That's all right. The 23rd is a workshop as well. We could, we could go before the workshop. How's that sound? We're meeting at five o'clock is the workshop. So we could do three o'clock. That would work for me. Does that work for everybody? Three o'clock? Please put that on your calendar. You're on the policy. I'll send it to you. Okay. August 23rd at three. Okay. For the strategic planning and the facilities, we will send out a doodle poll and figure out what works for everybody. But we do want to get these policies going. Some of them are going to impact us immediately. What's that? Okay. All right. Um, uh, board member Aguilera asked if we could create an equity committee. Um, she said that that happened under uh, Iverson. Iverson. Um, once upon a time, I said I was absolutely open to creating an equity committee. I know we have the tide group that meets, and I've asked Todd to kind of share some information. Uh, on the difference between tied and equity committee and the legal stuff, that the legal stuff that we are required to do. So there's a, a new statute that requires that um, school boards have an equity advisory committee. Because of our size, it doesn't go into effect for us until 2025. So I've been looking at that and meeting with all the other equity directors in the state, particularly the ones who are needing to get that in place as of July 1. And I shared out what our equity team in terms of our tie group has been, how it's composed. They're like, well, that you're already doing the work. That seems like a, a no brainer. So for our district, we have tied, which has been meeting now for about five years. We have last year, we started our district equity team. So that's a person from every building that's part of that team. And we met every month last year 
talking about what the focus of the month is. They created the equity audit. So it's the first one in Southern Oregon. Actually, the state of Oregon was created kind of brought a little bit. Our staff created the first <laughs> grassroots equity audit in the state of Oregon. And we've had about 400 people take that audit so far, just to give us some baseline data about people. The statute requirement coming up for us would require that the board have an equity advisory group. One suggestion, and you don't have to answer today, but you can think about it, would be to have members of the Tide Committee, which is composed of students, staff, and community members, have maybe four or five people, whatever number you thought was reasonable, to report from Tide to the board. Because effectively what the statute talks about is that an equity team would give guidance to the board on issues of equity, inclusion, diversity that you need to be thinking about. And then you would have some more information to make decisions, et cetera. So you have a group of folks that have been meeting together regularly. They're committed to this work. They have a, a historical context. But the, the shift would be that you decide the number, but maybe quarterly, they would come to the board to say, hey, here's what we've been working on. Here's our recommendations for you all to be thinking about. We kind of do that already. I give to you equity reports. Here's what's been going on. Here are the minutes and the stuff that we came up with in our equity our time group. So you're kind of getting some of that, but the purpose of the law is to have community members sort of give you that guidance rather than staff members. So that's one way to think about that. Creating another equity advisory team is probably just going to ask people that are already on the tie committee to step up to do that work too. So you're, you're kind of almost asking, you're going to create a separate thing, but they're probably the folks that are on the tie committee. Anyway. So that would be a recommendation to think about what if we ask Tide at the next at the first Tide meeting? We would like to form an advisory group from Tide that would maybe have a one-year term. So every year they might have new members that would come on, but they would come to the board and the superintendent maybe quarterly to give reports, things to think about. This is what we're working on. Um, a lot of this is about work that's being done. Are we doing anything to share out? Here's here are the things we've been working on. And also their concerns. As community members, here's what my concern is to, to address that to the board specifically. So we don't have to do anything no. tonight or this year. This came to me from Brenda. So um, if you'd like to table the conversation until another time, we can do that. If you'd like to have the Tide group um, create a committee to present to the board a few times a year, we're glad to do that too. They don't report to us currently on any you, schedule. Only from me. So I, okay. I when I we have stuff, that's when I will do it, an equity report to the board. Here's the stuff that we've been working on. Definitely. So I'll do that in a more formal way. Um, this would be requesting them to say, are there five of you, 55 people to commit to this, that would be willing four times a year, I'm just throwing numbers out, <laughs> to come to the board with, hey, here's the work that we've done in our last two meetings. We, we would write a summary report to you of what's been done, but then any things that the school board needs to be thinking about. Not to come from that group. How much overlap is there, sorry, between the Thai group and the district equity team? Fair amount. Fair amount. Yeah, so we've got our staff, so we got the way this design is to, so you have staff members working on equity bits and pieces. You have a community group that's giving input. Hey, here's how it's like to be a kid working, walking through your school. You should know if this happens to me every day. That gets fed back to the district equity team to work on that. Okay, this is what our kids are experiencing. This is what families are doing. Here's what we need to be doing. So then they would take action. You could result in policy changes. So the community says X, Y, Z is happening. The district team would look at policy to see where that's impacted, and they would rewrite or add to, go, they would go back and forth, and then would come to you, okay, here's the work that's happened. It's going to result in a change in our policy, whatever, fill in the blank, or a new policy. So we, we did that in 2019. We put our first equity policy, and the Tide group actually created that document and brought it to the board for approval. So it would be things like that. Yeah, the design is to be to collect information to hear from actual people, not us just assuming anything. Go back and work on it, bring it back to the tide group. How does that? How's this feel? Is that, are we hitting it? Are we getting close? No, you're not. Okay, go back and work on it. Bring it back. Okay, that's now pretty good. I think that's the kind of stuff you would be very interested in hearing. What is the work that's been going on? What's the change that's happening? 
Thank you. Does that help? Yep. Yeah. Well, that kind of stuff is important to people in our community, um, some more than others. But if there's a lot out there and we can comply with it early, I would say we should start as soon as practical. And I would disagree. We have kind of a system already set up. It would not be hard for us to go to that next level, be compliant a couple of years ahead of time, and just to work it out. How is it working? I also get feedback from other districts. So how is your equity advisory group working for you this year? So they give me feedback on how that's working. So we're learning from each other throughout that process too. And then, so I've gone to a couple equity things and I think a tied meeting is that something that will continue to show up, pop up on our radar and our calendars yep. as to when that happens. And right. I assume we could attend any tied meeting we wanted to. Yeah, we typically have an open invitation for board members to participate if you can. We COVID's been weird for us. We've typically done at least four between between four and six meetings a year. But quarterly seems to be a number that people can't say we can do that. And we've been getting between almost 45 people coming. So it's a pretty strong group of folks that comes. But yes, open invitation. Thank you. Instead of having a subcommittee, have we considered just having a liaison board member serve on in that role with with the committee? Yeah. And then instead of being a subcommittee, we just have a representative from the board working with you. But then I don't know if that would fit Brenda's vision of what she would like to see. But <laughs> we, we have not talked about that. Um, that wouldn't specifically meet the law that goes into place in 2025. But it would be a good start down that path too. So I think that's also a good idea. Okay. Do you know the ORS? If if not, uh, you would like I'll, I'll, I'll email send it. Email yeah, I'll send it. Yeah. 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 I'm with Gary. I think if we can comply early and it's easy to do, why not? We test it out. So at our first time meeting with that people on the agenda items, we say we're uh, we're going, here's the law, and we'd like to get on this earlier because we're already doing the work. And so we're looking for if you pick a number, probably five people could probably commit to four times that we come in. Typically, when would your first tide meeting take place? We kind of don't do September, so October week. So we won't be hearing at the board until probably late October, early yeah. November. Yeah. Okay. My guess is if we did quarterlies, we would do tide meeting and then very shortly thereafter, a uh, advisory group would come to the board to share out. And the law says five? No, I'm just making numbers up. So I'm okay. just I'm trying to throw reasonable numbers out like we could do this, you could have more. The more you have, it's even like you don't have everybody here tonight. So it happens when you have a larger group that not everybody can show. So. The downside of five is if two people can't show, is three people okay? Well, probably because it's nothing, there's nothing yeah. other than it's the advisory group giving information to the board. So three people, one person, a liaison could give the report, I suppose, but the statute talks about an advisory group that gives information to the board. So what kind of volunteers we get to? Just, you know, <laughs> to see what you have. So, Todd and I will work on this and yeah. give the board information, probably a written form, and uh, then you, we can get feedback from you in September to see if we're on the right path. Does that sound okay? Yes. Does that work, Cliff? Sure. Okay. Terrific. Sure. Thank you. Appreciate that. No, thank you. Um, let's see. Community committee, we got that board calendar. Um, we kind of talked about that. We've added some meetings. We'll do some added policy for the 23rd. We will work on uh, putting together some times that work for you for these other committees that are quite as urgently needed as policy committee. Okay. Does that work for everybody? We talked about just having a board meeting once a month and then doing the subcommittees. That would be my preference but I'm trying to ease people into that. Um, so I think if we 
have a board meeting a month and we do these committee works the second meeting of the month where we're getting into the deep dives into information. I think that would, I think you would find after time that there would be a need for a second full board meeting that the committees can do that work and report back to the full group. Um, but I'm not trying to uh, make radical changes on my second board meeting of the year. <laughs> All right, well, I won't upset the boat either then, but if we do happen to go to that Tuesdays, um, I, I have already blocked out this night for meetings. And so these subcommittees, at least for me, would best be served on this time. That would be, I, it makes sense to me, but I'm gonna leave it to the board. I, I'm here to serve you. If the board would like to switch to one full meeting a month and go to subcommittees the, the second meeting, that's fine. If you want to feel your way out around for this next few weeks, couple months, we're glad to do that. Works for me. Okay. Because otherwise we're, for some of you, we're adding a third meeting to the month, right? Because I'm asking you to have two board meetings and a committee meeting. Or in Gary's case, six meetings since I see he's listed on every, every subcommittee. Committee. Well, and, and Gary has volunteered to uh, meet with Jim uh, Green from OSBA and they're creating a, a subcommittee at OSBA that I'm trying to get Gary to volunteer for. So we'll see how that goes. But that's okay. Well, well, Gary for OSBA president. That's what we're going for. Oh, I don't think so. It's a rural caucus committee that they're creating. So, yeah. Um, well, I know in the past we have had, you know, a really more robust meeting the first of the, the second um, Tuesday of the month and then that fourth Tuesday a lot of times turned into um, workshops and also um, reports from different committees and things. So that's kind of a, a sideways step from that. Mm -hmm. How many, many people that know that is shooting and quit? <laughs> These other guys, <laughs> they're just COVID the people. <laughs> What's that? Getting read from the metal. Right. <laughs> well, to wrap my head around then let's, let's take time to wrap our head around it you do not have to make a decision tonight okay let's so once we get these committees in place and they're presenting to the full board and you're like okay i'm comfortable with what i'm hearing and and moving forward if you want to revisit this and go back to one full robust meeting the second tuesday of the month and then committee work the other time with presentations to the full board that that works for me okay so yeah not trying to force any big changes right now but there's some real work that we need to do and these committees need to to get going on right and we have a lot of enthusiasm from some of our principals um, ryan thompson is very excited to be on the policy committee he told me so when i volunteered told him he was going to be on it <laughs> um, but no, we've, we've got folks that are really anxious to look at facilities, to have strategic planning, um, to really start mapping out where we're going as a district. And I'm excited to uh, be a small part of it, those conversations. So, um, sizzle reel, we have that, but before the sizzle reel can, no, we'll go to Sizzle Reel, then we'll show the pictures of the lights. Oh, we can do either or they're right. Oh, they're okay, well then I want to, we have a problem with our lights at Grants Pass High School. Um, they're on the floor. Danny? All right. Is it Danny's fault that they're on the floor? Yes, Danny's <laughs> Danny. 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 He's operations. So. So, so routine cleaning, you know, at the high school, they're, they're cleaning those, those big, old lights and I think we have 11 of them in the district. There's five in the foyer of the high school. Um, we hang, we, two of them were taken down that were over the stairwells. Those were taken down a long time ago. So there were three 
large lights uh, in the high school for you. There are five across the front of the PAC as you come into the PAC, one in the science building, one in the entryway to Grants Pass High School. So routine cleaning, uh, one of the lights, the big ones on the right, um, actually came down. And way on the left, and I wish the picture was turned the other way, is the attachment. Part of that attaches to the roof, the other part attaches to the light. And this is the part. Yeah. It's actually room. loose the at the attachment at the roof. And so nobody's injured or anything like that. Um, so then we did something I thought was wise. We had the person come out and do some inspecting on the other lights. And that one was also loose. There's about a quarter of an inch gap next to it. So at that point we said, how about we just take them all down? And so, um, so they're all down. Nobody's hurt anything like that. Nobody's around or anything. Um, but so those lights um, are down and they don't lend a lot of light, but they're very decorative part of the uh, original design of Grass Pass High School. So anyway, they're down. Our next step will be, what do we do? Do we replace those lights? That bowl that you're looking at on the right, it's a mold that has to be done. That's about a fifteen hundred dollar uh, mold to have that that light done. So I think what we're going to do is look: Are there other lights that might be available, uh, less heavy, uh, still decorative, that kind of thing? Maybe not quite as expensive. And so we'll look at those and so the committee may take a look at that, make a recommendation to the board because that would have to be a contingency purchase if we had to replace. 11 lights at that cost of $1,500, which is just for the white part. I don't know, that by itself is more than $16,000. So we have to come to the board and ask for a contingency transfer to do that. But they the issues so we took them. We took them down. We didn't want the lights to be taken down and then somebody asks you about it. Hey, what happened to those lights at Grants Pass High School? And you not have a clue, <coughs> right? So we're just letting you know that for safety reasons, we pulled them all down because they are falling down. So were these part of the LED retrofit recently? And yeah. is that part of the problem? I don't think so. It's more of the um, probably just over time that attachment on the roof. I mean, as you clean them and stuff and things turn and twist a little bit, that just where they attached to the roof just got loose. So the LED light portion, actually this piece here and that's just they can just take that piece out without taking down the whole thing so i don't think it's because they did the led replacement <coughs> can we get our fifty thousand hours out of them of our led i do yeah. not believe that we have it so <laughs> yeah. but anyway that's 50 pounds and we don't want those to fall when students are around so Safety, <clears throat> safety is a different issue, mm -hmm. but sometimes our LED, which is supposed to save us money, doesn't. I think we got 50,000 hours out of the fixtures. That's true. So <laughs> there you go. They are 25 years old. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm not. You know, in love with the design to the point of saying, oh, it's got to be that. <laughs> so that's okay. my thought there. Okay. Going with the disco pole. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I wanted to look at Whatever up. pulls the students in. I'm <laughs> 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 disco pole. Well, we were looking at the, when they were down, if you looked up, you had a hard, I mean, you can see where they attached to the ceiling, obviously, but if you never looked up, you would. Probably never miss them too. There's that part right there. Yeah. Really decorative. So. Well, that's most of the students, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> it's this. Yeah. Well, They're on it their phone. Be, I guess. Yes. Anymore. So, um, sizzle reel. Right. I think some of you have seen this already, but I'm not sure everybody has seen it. So, it's a great one, Kristen. Yay. Huge kudos. This is fantastic. This will be about the 40th thoughts. time I've watched it. Every so. time I see it, I get teary. All right, let it roll, Jake. <laughs> 
We are Grants Pass School District 7. The students, staff, and families that make up this great community that we call home. From kindergarten to graduation, our schools prepare us. For college. For the workforce. For our future. The Grants Pass School District's mission is to provide an education that encourages all students to reach their potential and become responsible, productive citizens. We strive to create an environment where every student knows they belong. Our journey is guided by incredible teachers who inspire us, challenge us, and know us by name. Our schools are full of opportunities you will only find here. We build a reading, writing, science, and math field in elementary school and have a lot of fun too. With access to unique physical education and music programs, one of a kind after school enrichment opportunities, plus Bandon's dreams beginning as early as the fourth grade. And middle school is not like it used to be. We're learning to code video games and robots now. Getting our hands dirty in the kitchen and wood shop. We are building, creating, and innovating. We are high performing, high achieving, and our programs are some of the best in the state. With nine career and technical education programs, 56 college level courses, and dozens of sports, clubs, and activities. In Grants Pass Schools, you will find your passion and feel it. Whatever your goals, you can achieve them here. Because we are Grants Pass School District 7. We are GP. Cool every time. Every time. So is it hard getting permission slips for all those students? <laughs> well, thankfully that's a part of registration, whether families sign off on being involved in the media okay. release. So in terms of the number of shoots we did, we had to do a lot of checking and making sure because there's a few in every classroom, but um, we had no one helped with the shooting. And so we got it done. <laughs> Thank you. Very good. I watched it at home with my daughter and her friend and they thought it was great and they wanted to know how they could be in the next one. <laughs> Fantastic. <laughs> Because <laughs> there will be a next one. Be in <laughs> class. Yeah, I can do that. So uh, that's it for the superintendent report, unless you have questions. Um, so in the past, we've had um, directors and lists of responsibilities. And I just wondered if that was going to be forthcoming. Um, I'm not sure how I missed it, but so now Todd is the human resources. Todd's or? HR, Danny's operations. So mm -hmm. when Sherry retired, we separated <clears throat> business manager from a lot of duties that Sherry had taken on over the years. Mm -hmm. So um, I can't even begin to know, not having been here, what all Sherry was doing. But yes, uh, we can get you the, uh, we do have that, what everybody's role is at the district office. We'd be glad to send that to you. We had, we had it at a board meeting in the spring. Oh, we can send we it back out again. Out. Yep. All right, thank you. You bet, not a problem. Sometimes it takes a meeting or two for it to sink in. <laughs> and, and probably by the time you get it all figured out, by the time I've got it all figured out, we'll be making some adjustments to folks and what they're doing as well. So, yeah. But. It makes you feel better, Debbie. I was surprised Nefeli was sitting up here tonight. <laughs> then I realized she's Sherry. She's <laughs> Sherry. So. All right. Any more questions? All right. Um, Board reports and special concerns. Are there any members would like to speak? Well, um, so I participated in the mock interviews again for the summer um, students taking Career Academy. And I had three, um, I can't. I guess I call them AP students. You know, they're taking this class in the summer because they want to take more AP classes during the rest of the year. And, you know, it's really 
it's really a fantastic opportunity to talk to kids and um, and get to know them just a little tiny, teeny bit. But um, it's a very rewarding activity, and I highly recommend it. And, and um, Shauna Bland does an excellent job of organizing it, and um, it's a very worthwhile project. <laughs> well, actually, one of the students mentioned he played piano, and I said, hey, our church is looking for a piano player. <laughs> he said he already did, already had commitment, so. <laughs> it's on recruiting service. All right. Anybody else? Okay. So I, I have one. Um, it's a little bit of a video, and it's actually from an OSBA conference. The video isn't, but the guy who made the video was at the OSBA conference, I forget, some number of years ago. <clears throat> and he had a presentation, and even before him, uh, there was an OSBA presenter called um, Yang Zhao, who also had a presentation that actually meshed pretty well with the information that goes with this video. So this is just a little video about hope, and after it finishes, I'll talk about why I think it ties in and is important. Creating and Activating Hope. Kids at Hope and Arizona State University's Center for the Advanced Study and Practice of Hope explores how do you create and activate hope. For most of human history, hope was a topic in mythology, theology, philosophy, and in regular everyday conversation. However, science was slow in showing interest in unraveling the mystery of hope. It wasn't until the 1920s when a neurologist, Sigmund Freud, who later founded the field of psychoanalysis, made the faulty case that hope was a human condition disconnected from reality. Freud was wrong. Encouraged by famed psychiatrist Carl Menninger, who at the annual convention of psychiatry in 1959, argued that hope was a crucial yet understudied factor required by people to live more pleasurable and productive lives. Inspired by Dr. Menninger's speech, hope found its way to the research table, worthy of scientific study. Hope is often confused with constructs such as optimism, self-efficacy, resiliency, grit, self-esteem, and wishful thinking. Hope stands on its own, and yet it is a powerful ally with other core tenets that support the positive human experience. Beginning in 1994, University of Kansas psychologist Rick Snyder seized the hope construct and introduced a solid understanding about the elements of hope. What drove Snyder's model was that activating hope required a commitment toward goal achievement. He called that commitment agency. Additionally, Snyder further illuminated the hope construct by noting the importance of having a purposeful vision that directed a person's energy. He called those pathways. Snyder then defined hope by goals, pathways, and agency. Kids at Hope and Arizona State University began studying hope in the 1990s. Kids at Hope began to wonder what actually created hope, not just what it was. What was discovered was, to create hope in children as well as adults, three important actions needed to happen. First, we had to genuinely believe in the youth we serve. Second, we must connect with kids in meaningful ways. That is different than just enrolling them in programs, delivering curriculum, or offering services. And third, young people need to learn to mentally time travel, which is the learn process of imagining a future, returning to the present, and preparing for the journey. It was the understanding of those elements, believe, connect, time travel, 
that provided a profound recognition that we can create hope for all, but it requires intentionality. By creating hope, Kids at Hope introduced a strategic culture framework that relies on organization and communities around believing, connecting, and time traveling. No exceptions. With a focus on mental time travel, Hope is then activated by introducing life's four major destinations, home and family, education and career, community and service, and hobbies and recreation. The concept of future is no longer abstract. It has focus and dimensions. Children and adults can now imagine their goals within each of the four destinations. This process activates hope. It achieves it by establishing one or more goals for each destination. Furthermore, it identifies multiple pathways to the goals and it commits the agency needed for success. This is the power of mental time travel, the power of hope. Hope is a skill set gifted to humankind. It is passed on from one generation to the next. Our collective goal is to create and activate hope for all. To learn more about creating and activating hope, visit Kids at Hope. Kidsathope.org. So, um, yeah, that presentation at OSBA. Um, and the key thing about that presentation that really <clears throat> resonated with me is the, the time travel piece. So um, I didn't know how to articulate it very well, but like the uh, program that you guys just instituted, I'm going to forget what it's called, Naviance. Naviance, which gets the kids to sort of plan their future through their classes at the high school is helping them do that time travel, seeing where they want to be, bringing it back to the present so that they have hope that they can get there. Um, because it doesn't matter what we do if the kids don't try. Um, that's why. And, You've heard me say a number of times that we should graduate when they're in elementary school because they still believe us. <laughs> so um, the other interesting part that kind of goes with it from Young's Zhao was even though in the United States, our test scores are not that great compared to the rest of the world, the children in the United States do remarkably well. And one of the aspects of that related to in his presentation, they went to various countries in the world and asked the kids about their future, kind of this time travel deal. And in many, many of the countries, the kids, they couldn't see a future other than not a very inspiring one, let's put it that way. Except for the American kids. If you talk to them, they all thought they were going to play, in the, uh, play professional basketball or be astronauts or, you know, firemen. They all had projections well above what made sense for their test scores. But they do remarkably well. So, the reason I wanted to talk about that, I kind of been holding this, you know, the whole COVID thing was the drag. Um, but we're sort of past that, is to say that we could be more intentional about creating the hope in the kids, that time travel piece, so that they motivate themselves. I mean, there's only so much we can do if they won't try. And it's the getting them to try piece that's difficult for us as a district. I mean, we can put in all sorts of programs, but if the kid just goes in there and sits and won't try, then nothing happens. So I wanted to present this today so that we could think about it, so that when we 
get back around to our goals and pillars and stuff, that maybe we can work this intentional hope piece into it. So let's say you work the time travel piece into it. Yeah, we can work on that too. So we'll need some funding to buy the Lorian. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, plus <laughs> well, mental time travel is cheaper. <laughs> <laughs> but they could they could mentally time travel better in a DeLorean. Right. I could. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thank you, Gary. Is anybody else? No. All right. We have one action item, and that is seven point one approval of amended superintendent contract. Do we want to talk about it? I can, I can share real quick. So Tanya and I were talking and I'm like, I will never use my vacation days because the board was so generous with all these other days. So you gave me in my contract, by the way, COSA loved it and it will be in everybody else's contract um, going forward. You gave me um, four weeks of paid vacation plus two weeks off at Christmas and one week off at spring break. So, which was really, really nice, but no other superintendent of state gets that much time off. So it was an oversight by Bill Ransom. And we've agreed that we would take out the language that basically says I get the two weeks off at Christmas and the one week off at spring break. So, um, and just get the other vacations that, you were very, very generous, exceedingly generous, but that's all that's before you today. Well, I think you checked that with Bill Ransom. We did. Okay. Yes, it was an oversight on his part. Yes. Just right. Yeah. You know, that connected. Right. It's very gracious of you to give those back. Thank you. For well, catching us. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Actually, Tanya caught it. She's like, you're not supposed to get all that. <laughs> <laughs> Well, don't tell anybody. <laughs> I didn't say that. So I was like, well, let's get it right. So uh, member deal agreement moves to approve 7.1. Member Nelson seconds. They've been moved and seconded. All those in favor, say yes. 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 Any opposed? All right. Seconded, voted. 8.0, future meeting dates and suggested agenda items. 8.1, all staff welcome back on August 22nd at 11. 8.2, board workshop, August 23rd at five, but we also added policy at policy three. At three. Um, board meeting Tuesday, September 13th at five and Tuesday, September 27th, board meeting at five as well. We'll add other committees so we get information from the board. Okay. Well, I will adjourn and we'll move to executive session. After short break. Three minutes. Three minute break. <laughs>
Great. So, yep. Our last contract had monitoring for like at least a year, or maybe it was multiple years, to make sure that they <coughs> met the energy savings the contract said they were going to deliver. Okay. So, who's monitoring the monitor? Yeah. <laughs> I will. Danny, you and I yeah. will talk about that tomorrow. Who we'll monitor? Yeah, we're going to talk about the contract with Danny. So. Right. Yep. We'll get a report back to you uh, at the September, first September board meeting. Okay. Uh, do you need a motion on the contract? Yes. Yeah. Yes. I'll entertain a motion. Member Diva Grange, so moved. Member Nelson, second. Uh, acceptance of 10.1 negotiations. Having a first and then seconded, we have a vote. All of those in favor? Yes. 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 Any opposed? So before you strike that, I just want to say that we had sweets with Sweeney a week or two ago, mm -hmm. and Debbie didn't get a chance to come down and get ice cream. <laughs> so as soon as we hit the gavel, we're going to be serving ice cream in my office. We've got <laughs> vanilla ice cream, chocolate syrup, whipped cream, nuts, cherry. So ready to go for everybody. <laughs> all right. Go. Don't y'all wish you were here? Adjourn. 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 Adjour